Hi, I'm Benjamin Thomas. I have cleared NABARD Grade A 2019, the Economic Specialist position. To know my journey, please watch the following video. Hi friends, welcome to EduTap. So welcome to the interview with Topper series for NABARD Grade A 2019. So friends, today's interview is very special for two reasons. Let me just mention those reasons first. Uh, the first thing is uh, we have with us Mr. Benjamin Thomas and he has cleared NABARD Grade A 2019 on the specialist post. The discipline being economics. So again, it's uh, a bit different. Okay, we usually get candidates coming in who have cleared the uh, examination by generalist post, right? Okay. And the second thing is that's even more important for us that uh, Benjamin has been a part of our team. Okay, he's worked with us. So all the most special for us. We are really blessed that we have him and one of us uh, is there today sitting beside me. So first of all, Benjamin, uh, Benjamin congratulations from the entire team of Edutab. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. And we are really blessed that the day has come when you are here for the interview. Yeah, I'm also glad that I'm here after having cleared it. So. So he was an integral part and we'll talk about that journey of his as well. Uh, before that, as usual, let me just tell you about him uh, so that we can understand his journey better. So talking about his educational qualification, he has done his BA honours uh, in economics from St. Stephen's College, Delhi University. He's a 2012 pass out. Then he went on to pursue his master's from Madras School of Economics, Chennai, and he's a 2014 pass out from there. He was, he got his campus placement. He worked with Tri and uh, the duration was of a year, I think yeah, June 2015 to Feb 2016. There he worked as a research associate again in the economics discipline. So let me just tell you that throughout he has been associated with the discipline economics, uh, be it his studies, be it his placement. And then came to years of time where him specifically he uh, thought about pursuing his uh, aspirations to get into government sector uh, a government job so he gave a couple of examinations and uh, one of those is obviously UPSC and then SSC banking examinations also he had given in fact he reached the interview stage for IBPS PO then came NABAD and RBI as well in this in these two years he also cleared UGC NET uh, UGC net again in the year 2018 from the economics discipline then he moved on he gave attempts for NABAD RBI as well this is his third attempt in NABAD and again it is for the specialist post only in the second attempt he reached the interview stage but he could not make it to the finalist but this time he has as you can see he's sitting here and if you talk about RBI also he has been giving uh, for the specialist post only DEPR there also in the year 2018 he reached till the interview stage and he joined us uh, in the month of Feb 2019 again he worked for us uh, till May May 2019 and then he took this decision wherein he consciously quit and he wanted to pursue his teaching aspirations elsewhere so he went ahead he applied for the post of assistant professor ad hoc panel in Delhi University he got selected there and today he is teaching there he's an assistant professor there and simultaneously as you can see Nabad examination came in he filled the form he cleared and he's there with me today sitting here so quite a lot of things i told him it's really hard for me to memorize these things so thank you so much for this hardship out here <laughs> okay so benjamin before we begin just tell us about uh, any any few words that you have to begin with then we move on to your marks and strategy so uh, ma'am first of all i would like to say that it's all about perseverance so even if you look at my journey it's it's all about perseverance so it's not like i've cleared it at my first attempt mm -hmm. it's taken me a while so whosoever is out there preparing do not lose hope as long as you have the attempts and uh, the time with you do keep giving it because you never know when your time would come so i mean don't be disheartened by one or two attempts so i i cleared it on my third attempt so and also secondly don't look at the number of vacancies so this is something i also used to be worried about and even if you look at the year when i cleared that is this year there were just two vacancies in the general category for economics and still i made it so i mean don't think of all these externalities just be focused on what you have to study and never lose hope as long as you have the attempts as long as you are eligible keep giving these exams if you really want to get through them 
that's well said you know perseverance and that's what is reflected perseverance in perseverance and more importantly do believe in god as well i really do believe that god has a way of uh, making things work if you really want that thing to happen so. so you think that whatever happened in your journey was ultimately because you were destined to be in the yeah i mean all everybody god has a plan for everybody's life so ultimately that will happen the ways might be uh, different for different people some might get it faster some might or uh, take a little longer to get to their goal but ultimately everybody does reach there I think you know whenever we come out with this sessions with toppers we always look out for strategies obviously that is one thing which is very important but i think apart from that the journey also matters a lot yes. uh, like whoever is watching benjamin here as he said perseverance as you can see from his profile he has done a lot of things right and still he did not lose hope so i think more than strategy from the life experience we can gain a lot of things absolutely ma'am so uh as you would see my profile is a little varied like not a little i have i've done i've done a lot of things so i've worked with tra i have worked at edu tab so now i'm teaching at uh, st stephens in delhi university so i mean all of this sort of molds you and um most importantly i mean you have to keep yourself motivated it is very difficult i know people say a lot of things you meet people they might ask you what you are doing and i i have also faced all this like people kept asking me what are you doing why don't you do something else why don't you go abroad hmm. so a lot of uh, these things keep coming so in those times i know it is very very difficult but you have to find ways to keep yourself motivated i mean i don't know what else i can tell you there to help you but you need to have good friends good mentors i mean i had certain good friends who always kept motivating me and even my parents were very very encouraging you know usually parents start to fret when yes. you don't uh, you know end up getting anything over a long period of time but uh, nothing of that happened at my place so i'm very thankful for that as well and uh, most importantly do keep yourself motivated do other things do things that relax you hmm. so could be anything that takes your mind off from all of this it is very difficult in this day and age when the competition is very very uh, uh, you know uh, competition is has reached a different level altogether with the reducing vacancies and the number of people who are giving it every year but you need to find time out for things that you need to do outside so be it anything of uh, taking a walk or a yoga or something that you like playing i mean outdoor stuff not uh, you know playing computer games or whatever pubg or whatever is in fashion these days but uh, keep yourself motivated by uh, doing something outside as well very well said i think so these pointers should be taken down uh, by all those candidates who are watching this video and the main aim for these sessions is to give you an insight as to what goes through it's not always easy right so that's one thing so before that okay uh, we move forward we'll also get into the stuff where how did he prepare so uh, let me just tell you his marks first and then we'll ask him the secret okay so first of all talking about phase 1 uh, let me just individually tell you marks as you all know the marks are already out right so uh, reasoning he scored 14 out of 20 english 38 out of 40 computer 9.5 out of 20 ga 9.5 out of 20 esi 32.25 out of 40 ard 14.25 out of 40 quants it is 17 out of 20 his total summed up to 134.5 out of 200 that's that's really good score and let me tell you the cut off for his discipline that is economics it was 101.25 out of 200 he is way above the cut cutoff cutoff is 101.25 and he has scored 134.5 and let me just mention he is way above the generalist post cutoff as well like uh, not way above but yes 129 is a cutoff for generalist post and he is 134.5 so that's again an accomplishment talking about phase 2 marks uh, english 60 on 100 uh, we were having a chat and he told me that usually in english he scores 70 75 but this time there's a dip so we'll get to know what what you know mistakes that he had committed according to him then the discipline paper like for the generalist post you have esi and ard for his post that is uh, econ economics post there is the paper 100 marks completely on his discipline okay so 59.5 out of 100 so the total summed up to 119.5 out of 200 the cut off was 116 safe okay but not very far but safe 
the interview scores were really good 22 out of 25 and actually it is the interview scores that made his day and saved him and he's there in the final list so we'll talk about interview which we tend to neglect at some point of time right and the final score that he got was 141.5 out of 200 and you would be very surprised to know that this is the cutoff right so he just grazed through and i think his perseverance is here where it is you know showing the results basically yes so yes we are done with your marks uh, so let us start with the strategy uh, benjamin just tell us how did you prepare phase one you can split this according to you so uh, phase one this year ma'am what helped me most again i would say that like ma'am mentioned that i was working at edutap uh, between uh, Feb and May 2019 and I was handling the component of government schemes mm -hmm. so uh, I was very well versed see once you teach something so this again is a point uh, like if people would want to consider mm -hmm. once you teach a particular thing you would be you would recollect that much much better so this is something that I realized in my journey so uh, government schemes was absolutely thorough because I had taught that to uh, these kids. So civil step in civil step, I was handling that component. And luckily, so this is again where I was talking about uh, God's plan working out. So this year, the NABAD paper was schemes heavy. So those who gave the NABAD paper would know that prelims had a lot of questions from government schemes. And this reflects in my marks as well. So if you look at my ESI score this year, it is 32.25, yes. which is quite I feel it's quite good out of 40 and um, so see so I mean my strategy so my strategy would not be the same for everybody it is something that kind of happened this year so again uh, be thorough with all these things like government schemes and um, uh, ARD now coming to agriculture I was very very uh, weak at that uh, so so now before this year, so before 2019, the previous two attempts, I had not taken any coaching for uh, NABAD per se. So because I knew that the discipline cutoff would usually be very less and I was comfortably clearing it. But this year, having worked at EduTap, Deepak sir was gracious enough to allow me access to the EduTap material for this year. <laughs> and uh, that's why you see a huge jump in the scores as well. So this 134.5, I think, is attributed to that uh, particular access to the material that I was getting. Because before that, I was preparing at my end. And whenever you don't have a proper sort of guidance or material with you, you tend to um, read a lot of sources and then in the end you don't have time to revise everything that you have read. So here again I was able to streamline my uh, preparation because of this focused um, material that I had off EduTap. So ARD again I didn't have the time to do everything but um, I asked ma'am she is an expert in uh, agriculture so she told me the po like main sections that I could focus on from the material of EduTap so I just focused on that though I didn't do particularly well in ARD I just managed to get 14.25 out of 40 but that was sufficient and this is about ESI and ARD ESI again um, government schemes is the most important component other than that you should be absolutely thorough with your economic survey and budget and not only that be abreast with the current affairs uh, related to ESI. Current affairs is very very important and as uh, with regard to current affairs this GA bit I would say uh, don't rely on one coaching center uh, per se like EduTap also has its GA but I went beyond so um, GA usually I do from multiple sources and I compile them and make my own thing so um, GA again is very important so you have multiple sources like bankers at the and you have affairs cloud you also have edutap so i would suggest read all of them because certain things that some institutes might have missed you might uh, get in another institute so compile all of this together and uh, keep revising revision is very very important keep revising them again ga uh, i haven't scored particularly well it's just 9.5 out of 20 so these are areas that you can focus on and do well so because GA at the end of the day it is very very simple it's either you either know it or not and it's not going to be very hard so that's why if you have you know uh, gone through these various materials and if you have revised it revision is very important because if you have just read it once in that exam scenario it is um, 
not necessary that you remember what you have studied and uh, again see this ESI the very fact that I got 32.25 is because I taught government schemes so now when you teach it it gets ingrained in your um, head so even if you sort of don't revise it or don't have time I frankly wasn't uh, I, I mean I wasn't able to revise the government schemes but I was able to do well because I taught it but for those who haven't I mean taught but you are just reading it you'll have to revise it multiple times otherwise it doesn't stick to your head and uh, coming to these other sections English uh, quant and reasoning here I have always even in the previous years I have always focused on accuracy so don't end up over attempting just do what you know so here I can say with confidence that uh, in these three sections I have I mean 100% accuracy so mm -hmm. in English I had attempted 38 I got 38 out of 40 quant I had attempted 17 out of 20 and I got 17 and reasoning I had just attempted 14 questions I didn't do one puzzle and another syllogism question so 14 I had attempted and I got 14 correct so in even if you split I mean go beyond and look into these sections deeply so I I see I mean this is not a strategy I would want all of you to follow this is just what I used to do because of the paucity of time or lack of time I always just used to focus on what I was good at so mm -hmm. so to take an example I was never good at these uh, series questions that come in quad so I never practiced that also and I never used to look at that in the exam also so I would skip those questions so the three that I have left in quad are the reason uh, these series questions then uh, things that I'm good at I actually didn't need to work much so things like quadratic equations so this again is related to economics so economics is very mathematical for those who know I mean those, those who've done it at DU MSc etc know that economics is pretty mathematical quadratic is uh, my forte so I try not to miss quadratic then uh, then things like um, this uh, data interpretation moreover you would realize that in an exam like NABAT you would have a lot of time to do quant and reasoning so this I have always so this year I had almost one hour to do those uh, hmm. 40 questions of uh, now this reasoning and quant so I could do Aram say I could sit and solve each and every mathematics question so even if I mean see again I would not suggest this strategy yeah I mean I didn't focus a lot on quant or anything but since I had a lot of time and these questions are very logical you can keep at the end of the day if you keep I mean if if, if you're given time all people would be able to solve the question that they ask it's not very high level mathematics it's basic mathematics so if you given time you would be able to solve it and in fact I had time I, I had time in the NABAD exam to sit and do solve these questions individually and reasoning again uh, it's advisable see again reasoning uh, there are certain things you are good at so don't miss stuff like inequality I mean I am good at inequalities I don't know different people might be good at different things so inequalities I was good at so I never used to miss out on that and uh, puzzles the thing with puzzles I have always felt, I mean I don't know, it could be my opinion but uh, how much ever you practice for puzzles, mm -hmm. on a given day it is always possible that the thing might yes. not play. Yes. So uh, a certain element of luck is always involved when it comes to puzzles and my target is always in NABAD at least there would be around two puzzles at least to be able to solve one and one I was able to solve very quickly. The other there was time to attempt but I mean it just wasn't clicking so I didn't bother much about it so puzzles also try practicing it see um, when you talk about NABAD it's a very different ball game so here you have a lot of time to do uh, quant and reasoning but that might not be so for other exams like SEBI, RBI where you might need to be much much faster in these sections so I mean this is a NABAT specific strategy because here the weightage is more on ESI, ARD. So I would suggest those who are really wanting to get into NABAT to focus on these sections because that ultimately including English accounts for 160 out of 200. So quant and reasoning is just uh, 40 marks in no, the end. Nothing, nothing so, so you have to tailor your strategy according to the given exam. So don't at the end of the day, at the end of the day all these papers have the same thing so ESI is there everywhere quant is there so keep your preparation at par but um, gear your strategy for a particular exam 
pertaining to what it is asking so that's what I think beautifully summed up I was able to see that he had taken up each section and given good pointers out just to sum up whatever he was saying the first thing that he kept mentioning is that you know this is his strategy mm -hmm. and that's what he thought of okay you might have your own strengths you might have your own weaknesses so that's the reason when I told you at the beginning also that when we have a session with the topper the main aim uh, is to show you the journey of that particular person because you guys out there might think you know that you might be uh, in a position where you haven't cleared exams for so many years yeah, you yeah. might feel depressed yeah. right you might feel lost in your journey so these are some examples that we have that they have also seen that time they have also seen that face when they were totally asked what are you doing as he mentioned rightly right so i think we need to come out of that and the perseverance that they have if you also keep you can also be here one day exactly so that is that is the motive. crux of uh, this right. interview that be persevering like uh, there there are times in i know there are times in life when you can go i mean it's you also know yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. when one can be really low so i mean don't give up so i feel the very fact of having worked at edutap is what set the ball rolling again yeah. because when i didn't clear the rbi interview also i mean i was uh, very very depressed so mm -hmm. after that but i didn't have time to stay depressed because i, I had started working with mm -hmm. edutap so don't uh, get into that cycle of being depressed uh, start doing something else start, try for these opportunities you might have other opportunities where you can you know take your mind off mm -hmm. but still keep preparing so uh, if you work in such organizations which are geared at um, um, you know uh, guiding people you also get uh, uh, encouraged as well as it helps you in your preparation as well so don't never be disheartened there's always a next time at least till you have the age so that's yeah. true and the second other important thing that we could infer is he said that because of paucity of time that's a very good trick that work on your strengths mm -hmm. see it is not advisable that you leave your weaknesses but you know you need to do this subjectively based on the situation you're in that as he said he was working there were a couple of things going on in his life so he had to you know make the most out of whatever he's getting so that he did by maximizing or playing on his strengths like he said he didn't he can never solve series questions so he took this conscious decision i'm not going to solve that okay and accuracy accuracy is the third point that i can see from his uh, uh, journey that he had always you know if he's answering 10 questions he know that those 10 questions are going to be correct so it's going to be a very good point that you all also can note it down right so I think very well summed up the phase one. Uh, let's move on to phase two. Uh, again, uh, mentioning it here that the uh, second paper is not ESI and ARD, but the paper related to his discipline completely. So we'll talk about English because that's again common for all. So Benjamin, what went wrong this time? Though you have cleared the examination, so but 60 again, hours a disclaimer before starting: don't follow this strategy. I, I mean, uh, given my background and the education that I have, I have always been good at English so I never bothered much about the uh, second paper the descriptive English paper and the first two attempts so in 2017 and 18 I got good marks so I got 72 in uh, 2017 I got 74 in 2018 so I had sort of become complacent that uh, chalo, uh, hai, maybe Fine. this year also I'll get above 70 so uh, I went for the paper and I the moment I gave the paper, I knew this year was absolute. I mean, I had messed it up big time, and I had. That's why I was. Uh, I I was convinced that I'm not going to be shortlisted for the interview this year because there were anyway just two vacancies, and uh, given such a poor English paper that I had given, I I was. I mean, I, I had lost all hope, but somehow I think uh, this year the marks in English have been mm -hmm. low in general. This is my feeling. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Also, they changed the pa uh, pattern in the sense it's not a major change. It's just that they reduce the word word limit mm -hmm. drastically. So now this year, the word limit for essay was just 200 words. And those who know like uh, 200 words is absolutely nothing when it comes yes. to an essay. The first paragraph you write might end up being 200 words. Yes. So I couldn't write anything at all in my essay. And no proper introduction, no conclusion, nothing at all. And still I exceeded the majorly. So I probably would have written 250 words with no content. Mm. And uh, 
again pressy i mean all all the questions probably i exceeded the word limit so that's probably where i got penalized so this happened why did this happen because i never practiced or nor did i even look at any of these model essays even edutap has uh, you uh, comes out with model essays for the material so don't uh, be complacent don't uh, i mean this is the learning here sir, that do not neglect you might be see my phase 1 marks would prove that i got 38 out of 40 yes. in english so english was never a weak point but if you leave it like completely and you think you are the boss <laughs> here is what you will come down to so yeah. this again is a learning don't uh, uh, never kind of leave things completely practice english also practice writing presses because presse again is very important and requires practice to write that within the word limit and in the given time period moreover you're not writing it you're typing the things down so that might require mm -hmm. additional practice so uh, i would suggest practicing it on your uh, computer laptop or your laptop, laptop so that uh, you are in practice when it comes to the actual exam and um, uh, what all is a letter is fine i mean letter the topics are pretty general you should be able to do it ideally and comprehension again uh, comprehension try not uh, to write the exact words that are given in the comprehension try and write it in your own words that is what they would appreciate so uh, kind of uh, read it understand it and write the answers to the questions of the comprehension in your own words so I think very well said, right? That don't take your strengths for granted. I think. Yes, exactly. That is what I was. The main point is don't take anything for granted because ultimately this is open competition, mm -hmm. and everything that you do is relative, relative to what others are doing. Yes. So uh, you might feel you have done well, but relatively it might not be that. Mm -hmm. so. And the one other pointer is, you know, uh, summarizing your thoughts into few number of words. Huh. I think that's an art. It takes like you want to say something. You have so many points in your head, yes. but fixing that thing in, in that 200 words is, is a task. Yes. So there your practice comes into play. Exactly. Right. So I think that's very well said by him and uh, learn from his mistakes because as he said, as we can see, because of his perseverance that I do believe that he's here after even goofing up in English. Huh. So I think uh, we all are not that lucky to get that chance right sometimes so let's move on to the next paper uh, I think this is where your specialist post so all those who are applying for specialist post can take some pointers from here so here again um, since this is my subject I have done my graduation my post graduation in that so I just used to revise all that uh, so so now again NABAD RBI the strategies are very different so both uh, even RBI I give the DEPR one not the general one so NABAD just requires you to know your graduation level stuff because that is what they concentrate on and even if you look at the notification they are just asking you for a graduation degree in economics so um, um, just revise whatever you have done in your graduation so I was fortunate to study in Delhi University. Delhi University has a very good uh, economics course, which is, I, I think it's much ahead than what is taught in other parts of India. So I essentially just needed to revise all that I have done, uh, the books that I have studied in uh, college and all. So I just revised those things for, uh, for the discipline paper. But uh, usually, I mean, uh, you can never predict the discipline paper. It, it turns out to be really weird. So this year, the discipline paper was absolutely very weird. The questions were not even related to your discipline. They were asking random stuff. So this is where, I mean, if you have taken maybe some coaching, it could help because questions are very general. They were asking you about indexes and uh, oh, what the rank is and what the which is the best rank state. So essentially, it was not clear. Uh, yeah, it was again focused on this ESI, you can mm -hmm. say ESI, mm -hmm. more geared towards ESI and not the, you know, core, mm -hmm. there would be a few questions definitely from economics, from statistics and all of that, but uh, this year what I felt is it was very random and very uh, uh, vague sort of questions, there were questions from economics, but mostly it was all these vague sort of questions, so there again, uh, luck plays a big part so i mean i can't be commenting much but do what you can so revise all the uh, your economics bit very well and try and do these current affairs and esi bit also because you never know what they might ask and 
for agriculture also read that uh, economic survey has a chapter on agriculture read that mm -hmm. agriculture bit very well what is the capital formation in agriculture mm -hmm. so all of that things can get tested what is the agricultural growth rate so uh, these normal things to uh, i mean brush up so so if we are uh, practicing or preparing for esi in phase 1 that could have helped yes for your, that uh, definitely data. that definitely helps even for the at least i think for the economics discipline i have a feeling that does help and be very very sure about your economic survey and your budget mm -hmm. all of this is very very important because questions can directly come from them for any exam or any exam that you give so even if it's rbi uh, it's very very important to do uh, do the economic survey and also the budget so now if you talk about the rbi exam so that the D, so i can only be talking about the dpr so dpr again is uh, a different ball game altogether so there see now those who know the pattern of dpr would know that there are three papers so it's not phase 1 phase 2 so um, the phase 1 is known as paper 1 and that paper 1 though there will be a cut off that is set so that you can write paper 2 and paper 3 but paper 1 would also be included in your final selection okay. so this is different from the general, the general one where it is called phase 1 which is not included in the mm -hmm. final final selection so paper 1 marks are also included and paper 1 is uh, pretty hard so paper 1 is very it, um, uh, mathematical so those who are not used to this sort of uh, thing might find it really really hard so usually what i've seen most people who uh, end up getting through are those who would have studied at D DU, Delhi University or Delhi School of Economics or JNU. So where, where, where you know quantitative economics is focused at. So DU gives a very good background. So the you have to be very very sure of your uh, uh, quantitative economics because they ask you a lot of numericals especially the section 3 of paper 1 is fully focused on econometrics so econometrics uh, they ask you high level stuff they will ask you things to solve and all so if you are not used to such sort of things it gets really really hard moreover you have you don't have all one marker questions you have one markers two markers three markers and four markers as well and the negative is commensurately higher so if if you um, i mean if you get a four marker incorrect not only really will you not get those four marks you will get two marks reduced as well mm. so uh, that's a different i mean uh, again it's a very different ball game so you have to prepare that accordingly so i mean that's not like naban so uh, that paper one you need a different strategy you need to be very very thorough with your uh, basics and all the quant bit and uh, after you clear that paper one uh, then paper two and paper three so paper two again it's um, divided into two sections one section you would be asked about theory uh, so now here it is descriptive it is not objective like the general one so here you have to write down the answer the uh, questions would be on the screen but you have to write down the answer for that on the paper that they provide you so uh, here again two sections the first section would mostly concentrate on theory basically focusing on three areas macroeconomics and international macroeconomics and development economics so these are the three areas that they usually focus on questions would be geared to that and the second section section two would be focused on indian economy so here again is where the economic survey comes into play you have to be sure of that so that you are able to attend the questions of the second section as well so the first section would be done through your theory bit the second section is where the current affairs matter here economic survey and all these current happenings would come useful for the uh, section two of that and english again is same so descriptive english is same See, for DEPR. the general huh, dpr also you have to type all those questions out on the computer screen and again talking about the interview rbi interviews again would be a different level altogether i gave it in 2018 the interview of course was in 19 but the 2018 wala process and uh, there the questions would be of a different level so uh, they would ask you i mean they would be expect you to know high level stuff like time series and uh, uh, panel data and all of that so i was questioned all questioned on all of, all of these in my interview so you need to be prepared at that level for for the rbi interview so nice he has summed up uh, okay keeping let me just tell you that he uh, summed up 
you're the specialist post here economics in the phase two that's paper two for nabad as well as depr depr rbi right so he had given that also he reached till the interview stage in 2018 and that's what he mentioned what it takes to write depr okay where uh, the knowledge level of knowledge that you require in your discipline is different when you talk about rbi and when you talk about nabad and how is it different what are the different elements he very well uh, you know brought out that in pointers so those of you who are from economics background if you're looking for these two options rbi and nabad this can be really good uh, experience and exposure for you wherein you can uh, just take down his pointers and accordingly prepare right thank you for that extra bit uh, benjamin my pleasure ma'am okay now let's move on to the last phase of uh, the examination that's interview and so as in the beginning i told you when i was mentioning about the marks that the interview actually saved him right so he got 22 out of 25 so i would uh, put this question and you take it up tell us about interview experience overall so interview experience uh, it was conducted in a pretty cordial and jovial manner <laughs> so i was getting scared because uh, my number was uh, pretty down the list. I was 18th on the list and my num my turn came only after 4 p.m. that day. And before me, it was the generalists and the agriculture, animal husbandry specialists who had gone in. Mm -hmm. And they were being grilled like anything and I could, I mean, those, the panelists were sort of even shouting. We could hear what they were saying outside. outside. So okay. I was getting really, really scared sitting outside as to what my thing would end up being. <laughs> so, um, but when I entered, uh, I mean, nothing of that grilling bit happened with me. I don't know was what happened. So these are things, I mean, when things have to work in your yeah. favor, maybe uh, all of this works towards that only. So, um, yeah, so uh, so whenever, when you, if you've attended interviews of this level, you know that uh, there'll be a chairperson. So the chairperson in this case was a retired IAS officer. So he would be reading your profile. So they actually, the, all of the, all the panel members would be reading your profile. So he would just be talking, I mean, reading it aloud, oh, you've studied here and all of that. And uh, after reading that, then he uh, asked me what I'm doing currently. So then I mentioned that I I am an uh, ad hoc assistant professor. So that sort of I think hit off, mm -hmm. and he was he was like okay oh, oh so you're already <laughs> teaching and all of that. So uh, I mean I think that that probably made a big difference because I mean I feel that would have set me apart from mm -hmm. the yeah, other yes. candidates also. So um, th that worked in my favor. So then. Uh, see, I couldn't answer all that they asked. I mean, I, there were a lot of things I couldn't answer, but um, stay true to yourself. Be uh, be yourself. Basically, mm -hmm. be yourself. Don't bluff. That is very, very important because, see, first of all, you are not talking to one person only. There are five people. Mm -hmm. So you can't fool five people at the same <laughs> time. Take my word for it. So this was my uh, fourth competitive interview. So I have, I mean, learned quite a bit giving interviews so uh, never bluff because you might be able to fool one guy but yes. there are four others um, so this happened with me in the RBI interview so that the other uh, one person didn't uh, find out what I was uh, that I had bluffed but th there was another guy who later on asked me what did you say there then so they will catch you so there, there are five people who are keenly listening to what you are saying so never even think of bluffing and um, so again uh, there are many things i answered incorrectly so uh, maybe i'll take an example this might seem very silly because <laughs> this i mean this is something that i should have known i mean this is something i was i i mean it is expected that i should know so uh, the chairperson randomly asked me benjamin so uh, tell me who is benjamin franklin and <laughs> what is he famous for okay so I, without even thinking, I just said, sir, I think he is the former president of the United States of America. So that is incorrect. Mm -hmm. So they didn't correct me. They were looking at each other. I came home and I checked. He is not the former president of the United States. He's one of the found, four founding fathers of the United States of America. So see that, that again, I mean, I don't know if it went against, mm -hmm. against me or anything, but, uh, and then again, they asked me, what is he famous for? I said, uh, I think he's credit with the discovery of electricity that is sort of correct but then again he was an inventor in general he has invented a lot of things so 
so so that didn't go that well so then uh, um so uh, after that they moved on to the economics bit so one uh, lady one ma'am asked me about the slowdown so she asked me if there's a slowdown and what role the monetary and fiscal policy can play so um, should i get into the details no yeah, that's that's fine that's not okay you can you, as you just told gave an example uh-huh. so that so, i think that uh, so just be uh, so again uh, this interview something that i noticed was uh, that i was taking a contrary position to everything that they were saying mm-hmm. but i was justifying myself so they didn't have a problem with that so even the uh, chair person he assured me that don't worry this is just an uh, this is just a discussion benjamin you just have to mm-hmm. discuss it honestly you don't have to worry about what your opinions are mm-hmm. what your position is just uh, don't worry about all that because uh, one panel member even said that manmohan singh dr manmohan singh is saying this but why is it so i yeah. told him sir that is manmohan singh sir's view. opinion uh, this is my view they had no problem with that and um, so just that again at the end of the day be true to yourself be honest don't bluff and i think that should tre- uh, see you through so that is the yeah. and yeah uh, going about preparing of course uh, so you would have submitted a bio data yes. be absolutely sure of what you have written in that because you there will be questions on your bio data uh, so from the experience of those who had gone before me all of them were questioned on their bio data so be very very sure of what you write and uh, sometimes like a bio data can also work in your favor so if you have something interesting in your bio data and and you have prepared that well and suppose they pick that up yeah, it It's might work it. in your favor as well so bio data plays a very very important role be very sure of what you write and of course uh, now so now mine was a discipline specific thing so mm-hmm. of course i was um, i mean i had gone through all the happenings that were current in economic so slow down the reasons for it so of course you you are expected to be well abreast with all of that and um, read the newspaper even uh, be sure to read that current day's newspaper mm-hmm. because this year especially um all the candidates were asked a particular piece of news that um uh, ended up coming on that particular day so the day when i gave the interview if you guys uh, remember recently aramco the saudi arabian mm-hmm. biggest oil manufacturer had been attacked by those yes. rebels and there was going to be a supply disruption and oil prices were bound to rise so everybody was asked why oil prices were okay. going to rise so So again, uh, I know uh, the interview day. Everybody is very tense. Even I didn't read the, but I just read the front page. So do just glance through at least the front page, even on the day of your interview, so that in case they, they are even they will only remember what comes on the front page. They will not remember what what is in the uh, inside pages. So be sure that at least you've glanced through the front page and. Uh, that's about it so so that you are you are so if, even if they ask you if you they might ask you have you read today's newspaper you would know hmm. you can say yeah, at least the front page bit you know so that's about uh, okay. it yeah. so i think good pointers first is just be yourself yeah. right and uh, as he told you cannot fool all the panel members yes. sitting out yes. there yes that is absolutely so that is one point you cannot fool all of them so don't even think of bluffing so i think you know uh, like he mentioned that um, the the benjamin franklin question that he mm-hmm. was asked i think the intention that he had was not to fool them that's what he genuinely oh, thought i it is, i really right? thought that so. that's the reason i think they didn't take it in a negative uh-huh. way they were very sure that okay he thinks it that way and that's why he's saying so he didn't bluff actually so there comes a difference where you genuinely go wrong and where you don't know anything and you just want to give an answer so there's a big difference between these two things mm-hmm. and uh, thirdly as he said that the newspaper bit it's a very good pointer you can just uh, glance through the first page and even if they ask you you can just say i didn't have time and i just had time to see the first page of it right so i think that's a valid answer that's to a give. very honest answer yeah. and that will be taken anyway so yeah. you don't have to and i think the one very th- good thing that he said he was tense but i think the the atmosphere was not very much formal for, uh, yeah so i don't so, know 
what happened in my case they had become Chill. they had yeah they had completely <laughs> calmed down maybe right. they were yeah. wrapping up for the day so they were happy for yeah. it and maybe that's yeah. the reason so yeah it may be your day as he said things were meant to be that yeah. way and that's why they were that so way so if it is meant to happen it will whatever <laughs> obstacles come your way you will uh, finally get through so even with a 60 in english though i was getting say suppose this year i got 75 mm-hmm. i would have been miles above the cutoff yeah, so yeah. or maybe this year english marks are low in yeah, general i'm not very sure about that but uh, it had to happen uh, right it has to happen it will. Yeah. so don't give up keep uh, persevering yes. that is all that i can tell you so that's a very fruitful discussion with mr benjamin thomas out here so benjamin any parting words for all those who are seeing you watching you right here so i think i have uh, mentioned, mentioned it, it uh, <laughs> time and again so okay. i just uh, just don't lose hope keep working hard there is a time it will you things will work out for all of you as well just believe in yourself believe in god and keep working hard till the time you have your age and yes. and i think uh, as i as i told you that he had worked with us so even i know him personally so yes i have also seen that he had his own ups and downs so what each word that he uttered was 100% true so i can totally relate with the fact so that's why whatever he has uh, given uh, the he has spent the beans today so i think you need to take all those words that he had said very seriously so thank you so much benjamin first of all from the entire team your team of edutap right. that you had come down <laughs> thank you it's my yeah. pleasure to come and meet all of you again and we had actually thought one day he would be giving the interview so that worked them out for him as well thank you so much guys for joining in and keep watching the series for further interviews as well thank you so much